Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out at the range with a brand new product from Ruger. This one has me excited, and the reason it has me excited is it reminds me of a gun from my youth that I was never able to own. The rifle I want to talk about today is the new Ruger PC9 9mm carbine, and uh, yeah, this thing reminds me of the old Marlin Camp carbines. Now, if you're my age, uh, you'll remember those rifles very well. They had a wood stock, it was made by Marlin, and it shot pistol caliber rounds. This one is chambered in 9mm, but this one has a lot of features the old Marlin doesn't have. And we're going to talk about those features today in this video. Before we get started shooting, though, I want to tell you how I have the gun set up. So this is the base rifle as it would come out of the box. I haven't added any of the spacers to the stock. I've made no changes to it other than I reversed the charging handle from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And I've also installed a Trigicon MRO, which is kind of my go-to red dot sight now because it's so affordable and I've had very, very good luck with them. I have like five of them now and I've had no problems with them whatsoever. And it's mounted via a Midwest Industries quick detach mount, which just is a simple throw lever. And this is my preferred mount simply because I can get the mount off in a hurry if I need to, to go to my iron sights. I'm not so much about co-witness as I am about getting the sight off in emergencies to go back to my iron sights. The gun has really nice iron sights, and we probably won't zero them today. That'll be for another day, and we'll talk about these sights a little bit later in the video. Right now, what I want to do, though, is put the first few rounds out of the gun. Now, as the gun ships, it does come with a magazine well in it that accepts SR9 magazines, 9mm magazines, which is a Ruger product. I don't own an SR9, so it does come with one magazine, but it also comes with a magwell conversion for Glock magazines. These. I have no shortage of. I have a whole bunch of these guys, and we brought a whole bunch of different ones out. We brought out Glock magazines, we brought out SGM magazines, ETS group magazines, and we just want to see how the gun functions with a wide variety of ammunition and different types of Glock magazines. So I'm going to leave it in the Glock magazine configuration. I'll probably never put the other magazine well converter in there, simply because I don't want to buy a whole bunch of new magazines for a gun I don't own. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the magazine in, locks into place, charging handle right here, and I have some Fiocchi 124 grain ball in it. I have my challenge target downrange. It's one of the little stake and shoots. Very handy in weather like today. You can walk downrange quickly, stick it in the ground, and get back. And uh, so anyway, let's see if the sight's zeroed. I haven't zeroed the gun yet. And see how well the gun shoots. I'm really excited to do this. Here we go. First 15 rounds. Guys, that's twice now <laughs> I've put an MRO on a gun and just gotten lucky to where it was actually hitting the target. So we'll have to perfectly zero that a little bit later when it's warmer, but this is good enough for today's use just to do a function check of the gun and see how it works. So 124 grain Fiocchi, no problems whatsoever. What's really cool, take the magazine out. I'm a right-handed shooter. Just push the button, take the magazine out, stick another magazine in, and run the bolt. All right. Let's do a little bit more shooting with the gun and see if we can have, or not see if we can, to see if we will have any problems with some hollow points, which we brought out, and a wide variety of ball ammunition, which is what I typically shoot out of a carbine. We have some of the 9mm ZQI hollow point ammunition left over. I know, based upon my, uh, my BNT video, that a lot of you guys are concerned about being able to use hollow points in your carbines, and I understand that. For me, I primarily shoot ball rounds, even in a defensive 9mm carbine, I prefer a ball round for maximum reliability. But some of you guys wanna shoot hollow points, and I understand that. So we're gonna shoot some of this through the gun and see how it feeds the hollow points. Also, I, I should point out, if you look at the magazine, it's an SGM Happy Stick. It's made by SGM. I believe it's made in South Korea. Not sure on that one, but it's not made in the United States. And see how the gun functions with an SGM magazine and some hollow points. locks open. It almost tells you, like an AR-15 when it's empty, you have to really pay attention, but you can kind of sort of feel that bolt lock open, which is nice. I love it when a gun talks to me and tells me it's empty versus a malfunction. So we had perfect function with the uh, ZQI hollow points and the SGM magazine. Let's take a look at what comes in the PC Carbines box. This is how it will come to you 
when you first pick the carbine up. Typical Ruger logoing, just a generic cardboard box. Inside, you're going to find your registration card, owner's manual, join the NRA, join GOA, uh, a big thank you letter, and the owner's manual, which this time I will probably read. As a matter of fact, I will read it. You'll have the carbine with flag safety in it, a bill of sale, which that doesn't concern us at the moment, and then you have the styrofoam container that has all sorts of little goodies in it that we're going to need here for the next segment. So let's go ahead and get the box out of the way and take a closer look at the PC carbine 9mm. So it's a pretty conventional looking rifle, has a standard wrist style stock on it. We'll start at the rear here and talk about some of the features. In that little styrofoam container, you're going to find two extra spacers. There's one installed on the carbine as it comes from the factory. You can use the screwdriver to remove two screws here, and then you can lengthen or shorten the length of pull simply by adding or removing spacers. I like that feature because I happen to be a proud parent of three boys, and I can shorten this down for them and make a nice intermediate carbine for them once they master the 22s, which they're currently working on. Here's your cheek rest. This looks like it's removable, but it doesn't appear to be. There are no cheek comb risers in the box, so I don't think that's adjustable. Have the Ruger logo here, some stippling, which feels pretty good. It's not overly done. Moving forward, we have a trigger here that looks very reminiscent of the Ruger 1022. We have a cross block safety, just like the Ruger 1022, which again, guys, if you're used to the 1022, I mean, who hasn't owned a 1022 in the past? You're going to find the fire controls very similar. Push to the left for fire, push to the right for safe. Here's your magazine well. This is where, obviously, you would insert the SR9 magazine, which comes with the gun. And now we're going to lock the bolt to the rear now that we have the magazine in. Bolt does lock open on the last shot fired. We're going to remove that flag safety. And as you can see, we have a charging handle here on the right-hand side. Now, Ruger has really thought this over fairly well, in my opinion. This charging handle can be removed and inserted on this side of the bolt, so you can operate it either from the left or right side. As a matter of fact, the way that it's set up, it looks as though you could buy an extra one and run one on both sides if you want to. But do keep in mind that this is a reciprocating charging handle. To remove the magazine from the magazine well, if you were to use your index finger, you simply couldn't reach long enough, even with my monkey-like features, if there was a mag release up here. So Ruger put the magazine release right here, which for me makes perfect sense. So when I grab the magazine to remove it, I just grab the magazine, hit that with my thumb, and pull the magazine out. So there's your mag release. On top of the receiver, we have a Picatinny 1913 rail for optics. Good call. Moving forward, we have kind of, you know, big game hunting rifle sights like safari rifle sights. We have a rear sight that's forward on the barrel and a front sight. So we have a fairly short sight radius being that we don't have a rear sight all the way closer to the shooter's eye. This is adjustable for elevation. You do have your front sight, which has protective ears. And what's really neat about this is it has a very cl crisp, clean sight picture. So it is a rear aperture, meaning it has a hole. It's not a V notch or a U. So you do have a, an actual hole that you're looking to an ap aperture and then a front post. But when you're looking through this, it's almost as if these two are on the same focal plane. So you have a razor sharp image when you're looking at the target. That and Ruger has done their homework, so these protective ears don't even appear in your field of view when you're lining up that front post and perfectly centering it in the rear aperture. To remove the barrel from this, it's very much like a Ruger 1022 takedown carbine. Lock the bolt to the rear. It must be rear held to the rear. You have a button right here, or a lever. Pull that lever, twist until it stops, and then just pull. Ugh, there we go. It's sticking a little bit because it's brand new. And then you have the two apart. 
On the front here, we have regular sling swivels, both, both front and rear for conventional slings. And then we have a short Picatinny rail here, probably for a bipod if you choose to use one. Uh, nine millimeter, you're probably not gonna be shooting a thousand yards. So I don't know, maybe you put a flashlight or something there if you want it. On the front of the barrel, we have a thread protector. It has a little O-ring and half by 28 threads so you can suppress it. Good job, Ruger. This little O-ring, uh, it, it helps to give friction to keep this thread protector from backing off in the field while you're shooting it. And you may be able to leave it on there with a suppressor to get a gas seal. I wouldn't do that. I would probably just take this off and let the suppressor butt up against the barrel so it's perfectly uh, concentric to bore. Put that muzzle protector back on. Put the gun back together. Simply insert the barrel into the front. Line up those lugs, twist, and it will lock into place. Now we're really going to give the little Ruger a test. This is an SGM magazine. It's not a Glock mag, and we're running some 115 grain steel cased Wolf ammunition out of it. So let's see how it likes steel cased ammunition out of a non Glock magazine. And again, talks to me. Yep, perfect function. You know what, guys, typically when you're talking about a Ruger product, you can expect the gun to function. I really do like the controls. I like the fact that I can easily pop the magazine in and out. Now, if you're a left-handed shooter, I'm sure you can find ways to do it just as easily. It, it can be just as intuitive. You guys that are left-handed are used to working around the controls of a lot of guns, but even me just playing with it here for the first time, using it in my left hand, uh, again, you can put the charging handle over here and run it. I would say that the gun is fairly ambi-friendly. Now let's take it apart into a field strip. All right, this, this is gonna take tools. That's why we have tools in this little styrofoam box. We'll field strip it, show you how to do that. We'll also swap out the magazine well, so we're no longer gonna be using SR9 magazines. We will be using Glock magazines. Now I have to commend Ruger for doing that, making this rifle compatible with Glock magazines. A lot of companies suffer from the not invented here syndrome and simply won't support other magazines. So Ruger gives you both. So I have the Glock magazine well out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these wrenches. As far as I'm gonna take the gun down right now, I'm not gonna need the smallest of the wrenches and I probably won't need the medium sized one, but I definitely need the large wrench. And I'll set this aside. All right, so with the bolt locked to the rear, I'm gonna go ahead and take the barrel off, pull this little lever, twist and pull and it comes apart, we're gonna set that aside. On the bottom, there are two screws. These two screws must be removed. The largest of the hex keys can be used to remove them. I've already gone ahead and loosened them up a little bit here so we take less time taking this apart. Ruger mentions in the manual, do not attempt to fully remove these screws. They are captive for a reason so they don't fall out. Don't pull on them or twist them past a certain point with where they start to offer a lot of resistance. There's no need to do that as they are captive. All right, here we go. Last one in the front. All right, once you get the two screws out, you can then just lift the action out of the stock. Before we go any further into the field stripping, let's take the magazine well out for the SR9 and insert the magazine well for the Glock. The SR9 magazine well is held in place by two points. If you take a look at the front of the SR9 magazine, you'll notice a hole in the front of the magazine. This is how the SR9 magazine locks. It locks in that notch, whereas most other magazines have a, a cutout on one or both sides, like the Glock magazine. So you have two things that you have to do to get this magazine well out. First, you're gonna fully depress the magazine release, and then you're gonna reach inside and you probably won't be able to see this, but you're going to reach inside and push on that latch that would hold the front of the magazine while pulling up. So let's see if I can do this quickly and easily like that. Comes right out. So now I'm going to set the SR9 magazine well aside, take the Glock magazine well, 
and the wells contain their own ejectors and everything is self-contained. So now I'm going to set this down inside. All I have to do in this case, because it's a side locking magazine, I just depress the magazine release button and the magazine well drops right in. We can quickly check to make sure it's working right by inserting and removing a Glock magazine. So there you go, guys. That's how you swap out the magazine wells. All right, guys, let's throw this little rifle another curveball. Here we have an ETS Group magazine. It's a happy stick. ETS Group mags, I've, I've noticed that they fit a little bit snug in some of the 9mm handguns and carbines we've used them in in the past. Also, we have more Freedom Munitions, and we do have a discount code down below. I re receive no kickbacks from Freedom Munitions for the use of that code. That's just a thank you to our viewers. But it's their, uh, it's their new American Steel line. So it is a steel cased round, even though it looks like you have a brass case. It's just brass washed. So this is steel ammo. Let's see how this works in the little Ruger. Again, very tight. Wow, man. I really had to push on that to get it to lock. And that is a similar problem that we have with the ETS Group magazines and other guns. Let's see if it works. And that was with the bolt lock to the rear. That isn't, wasn't even with the bolt forward. All right, had a malfunction, and I don't know if we can attribute that to the steel cased ammo or the. Uh, now let's just run the bolt. There's a round in there, or if it was the uh, the magazine that caused that issue. I will say that the ejection is far more erratic with this ammo in the gun. And again, another malfunction. It feels a little bit sluggish, like this magazine's dragging on the bolt. All right, and it locked open. Uh, we're gonna try some of the American Steel in a different magazine. Here's a test, Tim. That's a Glock magazine with American <laughs> Steel in it. All right, Jason was ready. Here's a Glock magazine, a factory Glock magazine with American steel in it. So let's figure out if it's a steel cased ammo it doesn't like or if it's the magazine it doesn't like. I'm gonna go ahead and say it was the magazine it doesn't like. So the ETS Group magazine caused the Ruger some problems. Again, I've noticed that in the past, the ETS Group magazines aren't exactly the same dimensions as a Glock magazine or even the SGM magazines, which typically work pretty good in the guns I test them in. In my hand, I have an SGM 50 round drum. Now, this has been a bit finicky in the past. You've seen it many times here on the channel. It's the same one, I only have one. Sometimes it's a little bit snug in magazine wells, other times it causes functional issues. We have some 124 grain Fiocchi ammunition, which is loaded fairly modestly, so it should allow the gun to function. But let's see if the drum magazine works in this particular gun. Again, don't be surprised if you see a malfunction because some guns just simply don't like this SGM drum. Somehow, I'm getting brass coming straight past me. So I had a few hiccups with the old SDM drum. Not entirely surprising. Yeah. It's more of a novelty, guys. Real quickly, guys, if you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to directly support us over at Patreon. At Patreon, you guys support us directly in return. We try to give some stuff back to you guys. We do original blog posts. We post behind the scenes information. We answer all of your private messages, but we also do things like give away $300 in ammunition every single month. 
our friends over at Freedom Munitions give us that $300 to give away. So three lucky Patreons get $100 in ammunition every month and you can use it to buy whatever ammunition on their website. And they don't just sell their own ammo, they sell other brands as well. Our friends over at Forge from Freedom who make our MAC t-shirts, they give away five t-shirts every month to five lucky patrons. And again, you can pick whatever style of shirt that you want. But if you're a squad leader or above, you get special pricing over on the Copper Custom website on select items. But all of our patrons will post coupon codes every once in a while, once or twice a month, so all of our patrons can get a, a blowout deal on something like a flashlight, um, you know, red dot sights, firearms, all sorts of cool stuff, bags, rests, things like that. So that's how we try to give back to you guys for directly supporting us over on Patreon because YouTube has demonetized us and they're doing it not just to gun channels, but the airsoft channels, the knife channels, the gaming channels. So that's how we've decided to move forward and that's through direct support from you guys. But also guys, please consider supporting other folks out there that are content creators that you regularly consume their content as well and they have Patreon pages. Please consider supporting them as well. Thanks guys, we do appreciate that support. Now let's disassemble the receiver for regular field maintenance. Much like a Ruger 1022, you have two pins that you can push across. I'm gonna use the middle size hex key and just pop those little guys out. They just push straight across, pop, and out they go. No spring tension, nothing really holds them in except the stock. And there you go, both pins are out. I'm gonna set those aside. Trigger just lifts out. It's a little polymer housing, whether or not it's compatible with Ruger 1022 triggers, couldn't tell you. Don't have one here to compare it to at the moment. So we'll set that aside. Now you look inside, you can see the bolt inside of here. But before we can take the bolt out, we gotta take the charging handle off. And I've taken the liberty, I need the big hex key for this. I've taken the liberty of loosening this so we don't spend a bunch of time unscrewing this. And voila. There's your charging handle with its screw. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on the opposite side of the receiver for my own personal preferences. Now you'll look inside and you'll see a big bolt and a spring. Again, it's just really an upsized Ruger 1022. What you wanna do, there's a little bit of texturing on the inside right here, and you're gonna grab that and literally pull up on it. You can grab it. You see how I'm grabbing it and pulling it down? And as you do that, your bolt will start to lift out and draw it out from the rear. All right, now we have the bolt and recoil assembly out and that's your entire receiver. Set the receiver aside. Now here I've discovered something. Your recoil spring slides right out the back. It's interesting, I'm gonna, there's a little bit of shipping oil on it here. I'm gonna wipe some of this oil off so I don't get my hands all greasy. Right here, there are two pins. And if you push on the bolt face just a little bit, these two pins will drop right out into your hand. That, I think there's one more pin here. It's definitely under spring pressure. I got that one little pin there. Can I push it from the other side? I can. That's what I'm gonna use the little one for. I push this from the other side. I push out that last pin right there. <laughs> I know these are really tiny parts, guys. And now the extractor comes out. There's your extractor. And your bolt face comes out. Now what I'm thinking here, guys, given the mass of the bolt and the fact that it's re uh, user re removable, I'm guessing this gun is also multi-caliber. You should be able to swap out this bolt face, I'm guessing, and make it a different caliber. So we have our extractor and spring, bolt face, and then here is just the firing pin. And there's your firing pin. So that's really probably further than you would ever really need to go to completely strip the gun and to clean it. So putting it back together is just a simple matter of reversing that process. Guys, I have never taken this apart before. I've never detailed stripped the bolt before. 
The first time I took it apart, those two pins fell out. I discovered that that bolt face came off. And that's really, really interesting to me because I hope Ruger does have plans to offer this in other calibers, 10 millimeter. Ruger, if you're watching this, 10 millimeter. <laughs> Here's some more Fiocchi 124 grain ammo. You'll notice the bullet profile is just a little bit different from our last shipment of ammo, but it's still 124 grain and a standard Glock 30 round, 32 round happy stick. Only 30 rounds loaded. Pretty interesting. The ejection is all over the place. I see some of it almost come right past my shoulder. So if you're a left-handed shooter, some of that stuff would be coming right back at your face. So be mindful of that. Me as a right-handed shooter, it's not causing me any problems. Let's put it back together. All right. Again, having never done this before, let's just reverse what I've done here. Put the firing pin in there. Line up the bolt, which is under that firing pin spring tension. And I'm gonna put one pin in there just to hold it and see what happens. Because now I have to align a small pin with my extractor. I'm gonna put the extractor spring in on its perch, push the extractor in and try to put that little pin back in and line up the hole there if I can. There we go. It's actually a lot easier than it looks, guys. And then put the other pin in, in place and your bolt head and bolt are back together. Really, really simple. Take your recoil spring and plate, slide that in. That's modular as well. Presumably you might be able to put a heavier recoil spring in there, Ruger, for a 10 millimeter conversion. <laughs> All right, let's put the bolt back into the receiver itself. You'll notice that there's this little spring-loaded arm here, and we're working around that little arm. It normally wants to stay up, and that's fine. So you're just going to invert this bolt, spring goes down, and slide this under that little arm, and then push your recoil spring back into place, and everything lines up. Easy as it gets. Now I'm going to flip it over because, remember guys, I want to set this up so that the bolt's charging handle is on the left side of the receiver. I'm going to use the large hex key once again, or the hex wrench, and I'm just going to screw it down. And snug it up so it doesn't come out while we're out in the field shooting. And there we go. The upper receiver is reassembled. Now all I have to do is put the trigger pack on. So I'm gonna lay it on its top, take the trigger pack, lay it in there, line up the holes, which they should automatically line up pretty much. A little bit of wiggling and they'll go right through. Again, the stock holds these two pins in place. To put it back into the stock, set the action into the stock, let it drop down like that. And now we're just going to tighten up these two screws. Snug those up so they don't back out while we're out shooting this bad boy. And now I can pull the bolt slightly to the rear. Matter of fact, I can just lock it to the rear using the locking latch. Take my barrel. And we are now ready to shoot the PC9 carbine as with, I should say, a Glock magazine. Well guys, what do we find out about the PC9 carbine this afternoon? Now keep in mind the gun comes to market in the mid fives. I've seen them online for 530 bucks already, but the MSRP on them is about $649. 
which makes it pretty darn competitive. It has some really cool features like the quick take down barrel system. I like the fact that it has a milled 1913 rail into the top. You don't have to bolt it on. I don't like bolting rails on if I can avoid it because screws tend to come loose. So uh, yeah, it works really good with my Turgicon MRO and Midwest Industries uh, quick detach mount. We ran the gun suppressed. It runs fine suppressed. It makes a pretty cool suppressor host. Uh, you definitely can hear the bolt impacting the rear of the receiver. Uh, it was just something to note. It's not you know, horribly loud or anything like that, but maybe in the spring we'll take this gun out and put it on the sound meter to see how well it performs. If you're going to run the gun with, with the uh, Glock magazine well conversion, I would recommend based upon our shooting this afternoon that you stick to factory Glock magazines. That or maybe the Magpuls. We don't have any out here to test, but I've had pretty good luck with those. The ETS Group magazines and the SGM magazines are going to give you spotty uh, performance, and that's not uncommon with those magazines. We also discovered that the gun likes the slightly warmer loads. Some of the range ammunition that's loaded very low, you know, kind of a PUD load, the gun may not like, especially if you're using non-Glock magazines. The other option, of course, is to use it in the way that it ships to you from the factory with its SR9 magazine well. If you're a Ruger owner and you have lots of SR9 magazines, there's no reason to switch it over to a Glock magazine well. But I suppose, or I suspect most of you guys out there are much like me. I have far more Glock magazines than I do SR9 magazines, which I have just one of, and that's the one that came with this gun. So anyway, guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, one of the other great ways to do that is to swing by and check us out at coppercustom.com. That's our online store. We have a lot of great products at great prices. That, and we have a new auction site where we're going to auction off rare things and oddball things that we come across. And also, in 2018, we plan to start auctioning off some of the video guns, the guns that we use here on video, so you guys can have access to them. This is also our 10th year. Uh, we've been doing this for 10 years, man time flies, but we want to thank you guys for sticking with us for all these years and helping the Military Arms Channel grow, which is greatly appreciated. All right, let's go ahead and check out and fire a few more rounds here and uh, go home and warm up a little bit. This winter has really been pretty relentless for us this year. trying to pull off some headshots there on the challenge target and this little thing was popping them in the head every single time on the Epsic kill zone target. It's a cool little gun. Put it away and go home. <laughs> 